Hey everybody, it's Scott Hanselman. I'm behind the scenes here. I'm talking to Stephen Kirk. How are you? I'm good, thank you. We are in the green room here at .NET Fringe. This is where all the famous people hang out in The Walking Dead, or not The Walking Dead, The Grateful Dead, also The Walking Dead. Is it, <laughs> without the lights on, it's pretty creepy in here. But this is, uh, yeah, this is actually an old, uh, the Crystal Ballroom is a place where famous people come, and also Stephen Kirk. So you, uh, you made a GitHub project called Avalonia. Yeah. What was Avalon? Avalon was the code name for WPF in the early days, back in the early 2000s. Um, so yeah. then Avalonia is a uh, an homage, almost. Yeah, a homage, yeah. Um, it was previously called Perspex, but we had to change the name because Perfex is a, Perspex is a registered trademark, so... Um, oh, and frankly, Avalonia is a really cool name. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of happy with it. That's cool. So, uh, can you take it short to me here? <coughs> sure. Okay, so this is just a simple um, app. This is our um, control gallery. Mm -hmm. um, so you're on Windows here, of course. Yeah, this is on Windows. Um, but this is cross-platform. Cross doesn't have to be on yeah, Windows. Yeah, we su we currently support Windows, um, Mac, and Linux, and we also have kind of experimental ports for uh, mobile platforms. Okay. So, so here's your control gallery. Yeah, um, it, it doesn't do so much at the moment, but you can see that we have the... Uh, but this is not WPF that I'm this looking at. This is not WPF. It's, this is using Direct2D for rendering. Um, we're rendering the controls from scratch, essentially. Um, so if I hovered over these with Spy++, I'm not going to see Windows controls? You're not going to see anything, no. Okay. What, what does that mean from accessibility perspective? That means we need to implement accessibility. <laughs> so in this context, the blind are, are blind? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So you have what they call owner draw That's controls. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's one of something that people have been asking us for, and it's something we definitely need to do accessibility. But okay. There are, there's a lot more to do. Still. But we're on Windows here, but this works on on Mac and Linux. Yeah. So you said you're using Direct Two D, but those things don't exist on Mac. No. Um, on Mac and Linux, we're using GTK and Cairo um, currently, but we'd like to move to Skia Sharp, but that's still missing some functionality at the moment. So what's the layering like here? There's like the XAML parser, and then yeah. you've got the, the it goes down the stack. What's that stack yeah. look like? Uh, we use the XAML parser called OmniXAML, um, and then um, then there's Avalonia, <laughs> okay. which we pretty much do everything else. Um, and then you have pluggable 2D renderers underneath it. Yeah, and you pluggable use backends. We have pluggable a implementations. Yeah, um, we have a uh, windowing backend and a rendering backend. So currently, for the windowing backend, we have. Um, Win32 mm -hmm. and GTK, and for rendering we have Direct2D or Cairo, and a basic implementation using Skia. Which has been so what, what has happened in technology in 2016, or in open source in 2016, to make something like this possible? I think people have been asking for, effectively, right. WPF cross-platform forever, and we've always been told it's probably impossible. Right. Is that because WPF itself is so Win32 specific and this is truly a clean room implementation that would make this possible? I think so, yeah. I mean, originally I started in, um, doing a re-implementation of WPF using the exact same APIs, but um, I was not enjoying it. WPF ah. is just, um, and you know, it's, a, it's an open source project. I'm doing it for fun. I, use, ah. I do it in my spare, spare time. And so you don't need this for work? No, no, this is absolutely uh, not for work. So when you say that you were doing it with the WPF APIs, that implies that there this is its own thing. Yeah, you're not we, you're not going to take my WPF app and port it over. It's similar. It's similar where it makes sense, but the you know WPF was invented in a time before generics, before async await, um, and with things like um, we for binding we use reactive extensions because I mean they are essentially bindings. And these so. are this is modern programming, right? This exactly. Yeah. How it was done in 2016, not how it was done in 2004, exactly, yeah, 2005. Yeah. But we, where it makes sense, we follow the WPF APIs. Mm -hmm. um, if, if there's a choice between WPF and something completely different, we'll go for WPF as long as it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now what you're saying, it's something that you're doing in your spare time. Is it a toy or do I bet my company on this? <laughs> it's still in alpha, um, but people are building applications on it now. Uh, I wouldn't bet your company on it because... No. Um, and then call you and demand support. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but. I hope that in the next, in this year, hopefully, we should we'll hopefully be in beta. Um, huh. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, I, I actually have a little startup on the side called My Echo. Okay. And it basically is a bridge between Siri and Windows. 
And we have a little WPF application that uses this thing called Ma Apps Metro, yeah. M A H Apps, and it's it's a fairly simple two or three screen WPF application. And we've had asked, we've had people ask for Linux support. We've had people ask for uh, for Mac support. Could I move that over? And if I did, how hard would it be? It should not be difficult. I, I'd imagine it depends if you're doing any kind of. The only of thing I'm doing is stuff, I have a uh, a custom control for doing a QR code. Okay. But otherwise, it's drop downs, data binding, buttons. Yeah, um, should be possible. It it kind of also depends on the MVVM library that you're using, mm -hmm. whether that is um, kind of tied to dependency property because we have our own version of dependency property because okay. we we don't want to bring in WPF because that's not available on other mm. platforms. Um, so it depends on that. Um, we currently use um, Reactive UI as um, we bake in Reactive UI mm -hmm. uh, as the MVVM library. But um, yeah, it depends on things like that. But theoretically, it should be easy enough. So what can we, the community, do to help? What do you need? Do you need us to just put mean things in issues, or do you need pull requests? Everything. <laughs> we need docs. We need, you want a website? We need what docs, can we do to help? A website. Um, we need um, benchmarking setup. The most the most important thing we're missing at the moment is that um, on every frame, on every redraw, we redraw the whole window. Which okay, obviously you need diffs. Right. You need. Yeah, we need someone who knows how to do that stuff. If someone knows how to do that stuff, great. Um, I will learn, but it might take a while. <laughs> so where is this on GitHub? This is on github.com stroke um, Avalonia UI stroke Avalonia. All right, very cool. Thanks so much, Stephen Kirk here at .NET Friends, taking a look at Avalonia. Thank you.